A little while back, I made a video about the Republic XP-47J and titled it the fastest piston engine fighter ever. And that caused some comment. Some people just went, no, 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 no. largely because of that whole obsessive fixation with the weapons of Nazi Germany thing. I mean, fair enough, whatever floats your boat. But there were also a whole raft of other aircraft suggestions, and I thought it might be worth digging into some of them. Plus, as I pointed out in the original video, there is some question over Republic's claim for the XP-47J. They said the aircraft achieved a top speed of 505 miles per hour during testing, which if true, would make it the fastest piston engine fighter by quite a margin. Now, the issue with Republic's claims is that when the United States Army Air Force did their own trials, they only managed top speeds of 484 miles per hour, which is certainly pretty respectable, but quite a bit slower, especially when the other contenders for the title are running so close behind. The other factor is that the XP-47J only remained a testbed and prototype, never seeing service. So I think we can also split the contenders into several categories, test beds and actual service fighters. And to be honest, even that isn't completely clear cut, as I hope will become apparent as this video progresses. I feel I should also point out that this is essentially an exercise in navel gazing, because absolute top speeds is really largely irrelevant in combat reality. Most fighters enjoyed their best handling and performance at particular altitudes, and the skill of the pilot often revolved around understanding how his aircraft performed in relation to an opponent's one, and forcing the fight into the scenario that best suited his goal of killing the other guy. But absolute top speed has long been a favourite top trump topic in aviation discussion, so let's see if we can settle it. And of course, we are talking about fighters, so the actual world record holder for fastest piston engine aircraft, which I believe is the P-51 Voodoo currently, doesn't count as it is modified to be a racer, nor do the other former service aircraft modified for the job. The other issue with this whole topic is just which speeds do you believe? If you go onto the internet, you can find just about anything you want cited, generally with nothing to support a particular claim. Plus, there are further claims about things like supersonic dive speeds achieved. Well, for clarity, the speeds I will use will be those cited as the highest achieved in level flight by the types we are going to look at. And I shall be drawing the figures from The Complete Book of Fighters by William Green and Gordon Swanborough. The reason I am doing this is that all of the aircraft in contention are listed in this book, and the authors were experts in the field with decades of experience dozens of books between them, and access to data that I simply do not have. However, there will be a few occasions where I quote other stated speeds not registered in the book, which I will explain when I do, and hopefully it will give a more complete coverage of the topic. Also, there are planes missing from the list. This is because I wanted to largely cover the ones that people said they believed were the real fastest piston engine fighters, but I've put in some obscure ones that are in the running and largely overlooked. So with all that said and done, let's look at the contenders, most suggested by commentators, and their standing in the rankings. I'll be putting the XP-47J at the top because its listed top speed as supplied by the manufacturer puts it in that place, but if you don't agree with that, feel free to ignore it. Which means the slowest of the aircraft suggested as the fastest is... This carrier interceptor was a popular suggestion, probably also helped by the fact that a modified Bearcat racer was the world speed record holder for a while. But that aircraft is, as already said, excluded for its specialist status, and as the service model has a listed top speed of 428 miles per hour at 18,800 feet, it is the slowest of our contenders. Another Grumman entry, the Tiger Cat F7F3, might not be high in the list with a top speed of 435 miles per hour at 22,200 feet, but as it was a twin engine carrier fighter bomber rather than a dedicated interceptor, that is a pretty impressive performance.
famously fast, the Tempest was a popular suggestion. I could cite the Tempest 1 as the best example of this aircraft, which recorded a top speed of 466 miles per hour at 24,500 feet, but seeing as that aircraft was essentially a failure, I thought it better to go with the Tempest 2, which saw quite a bit of post-war service and clocked up a very respectable top speed of 440 miles per hour at 15,900 feet. Another aircraft I've done a video on, it is impressive to think that the Australians went from building the Wirraway trainer in 1939 to producing the Kangaroo by 1946, a piston fighter as good as any built anywhere. Cursed as it was to be created just as the jet was coming to dominance, the Kangaroo never got a chance at service or production, remaining prototypes, but its top speed of 448 miles per hour at 26,400 feet was certainly impressive. It's practically the law that any list featuring aircraft from World War II must have the Spitfire somewhere in it, and so the Spitfire Mark 21 comes in at number 15, with a listed top speed of 454 miles per hour at 26,000 feet. In 14th place is the North American F-82 Twin Mustang. Wanting to get a long-range all-weather interceptor into service in short order, North American took the expedient of basically stringing two P-51s together. OK, it was a bit more complex than that, but there is no denying that the F-82, despite its unusual configuration, was fast, with a top speed of 456 miles per hour at 21,000 feet. As we close into the top of the list and the speed margins get tighter, we get our first draw. And in joint 13th place, we find the Martin Baker MB5, the Hawker Sea Fury, and the IAE 30, all with top recorded speeds of 460 miles per hour. The MB5 was one of the great what if aircraft, despite appearing to be a Mustang with a Griffin engine. Indeed, one test pilot of the type expressed disappointment that it never achieved service in 1944, as was theoretically possible. Alas, the MB-5 didn't get into service, mainly because existing aircraft were good enough already, and the single prototype was ultimately used as a ground target. The Sea Fury was a more popular suggestion for the title by commentators, and though it was too late for service in World War II, it certainly was one of the most formidable piston engine aircraft to ever see combat including famously shooting down MiG-15 jets during the Korean War. Tough, dependable, and yet still surprisingly fast, the Sea Fury provided good service throughout the late 1940s and early 1950s with a number of operators, and would go on to be a popular option for speed racing. And as for our final 13th place, the IAE-30 was a beautiful twin-engine heavy fighter built by the Argentines in the post-war era, which, unfortunately, got killed off by financial issues. The first German contender, and the final development of the famous FW190 series, the TA-152 was a high-altitude interceptor which packed a heavy hitting punch of a 30mm and two 20mm cannon in its skinny looking fuselage. And this was all combined with a listed top speed of 462 miles per hour at 31,170 feet, making the TA-152 a real hot rod. Plus it also, unlike later contenders, actually saw combat, being credited with achieving 7 kills for 4 losses, and proving as formidable at low level altitudes as at high, proving a match for the formidable Hawker Tempests in dogfights. Considering the state of the German fighter corps by the time the TA-152 entered service in late 1944, the ability to actually prove useful in combat against overwhelming Allied air power makes it, in my opinion, the most formidable German fighter of the Second World War. We have a nasty tendency in the English-speaking world to overlook the Russian fighters, and that really needs addressing because the Soviets built some damn good ones. And in the Yak-3M-108, one that was bloody fast. 
The Yak-3 is suitably famous for the role they played in fighting over the Eastern Front, with almost 5,000 of the type built, but the 108 variant sought to push the design to the limit of what it could achieve. Fitted with a VK-108 engine and armed with a 23mm cannon, the 3M-108 was, according to Green and Swanborough, capable of a top speed of 463 miles per hour at 19,685 feet. Unfortunately, it never really worked out due to issues with engine cooling, and the type remained prototype only. An aircraft I have to get around to doing a dedicated video on one day, though that is true of a number of these here featured, the Shinden is a truly remarkable design that looks more like something out of a manga cartoon than an actual flying aircraft. And truth be told, it shouldn't be in this list, but there were a number of commentators who insist that it ranks as the fastest piston engine fighter, so I'm putting it in to basically explain why it doesn't count. Again, designed as a high altitude interceptor to tackle the formidable B-29, the Shinden was intended to be armed with four 30mm cannon, but only a couple of prototypes were ever built, which I am fairly confident wouldn't have been armed, and in total three flights were made in literally the last days of the Second World War. The Shinden might have looked futuristic, but the limited reports sound like the design had severe issues, and I highly doubt it would have ever got into service, as these sort of push designs were experimented with by many nations, and yet none of them were ever adopted. Additionally, the exact top speed doesn't seem to have been reliably recorded, and Green and Swanborough state that their listed top speed of 466 miles per hour is an estimate. So, though some people think the J7W is the Second World War's fastest piston engine fighter, it wasn't either the fastest, nor, in fact, a fighter, as I'm pretty sure it was never armed. In joint ninth place, we have two solid American contenders. The F4U5 was the ultimate development of the formidable Vault Corsair, taking the already legendary F4U4 and making it even better. Capable of a top listed speed of 470 miles per hour at 26,800 feet, the 5 was just a little too late for ranking as the fastest piston engine fighter of World War II. But like the Sea Fury, was to provide excellent service as a heavy hitting fighter bomber to the US carrier air wings throughout the Korean War and a few years after. It is matched with the Republic P 47M. This was the fastest service version of the equally legendary P 47 Thunderbolt, which is often remembered as a sledgehammer of a ground attack aircraft, but in the M was configured into a lightweight, by P 47 standards at least, lightning quick low level interceptor. And for my money, the P-47M is the fastest operational piston engine fighter of the Second World War, though not the fastest ever. My thinking for this is that the M actually got into service in enough numbers to actually see some worthwhile combat service before the end of hostilities. Though, as the numbers show, there are still a few more contenders to go, and perhaps you might think one of those is the rightful title holder. Another very popular suggestion, the Hornet was certainly fast, which, seeing as it was almost like a single-seat evolution of the Mosquito, is hardly surprising. Listed as achieving 472 miles per hour at 22,000 feet, this twin-engine long-range fighter and attack aircraft served with the RAF after World War II, seeing action in Malaya, and finally retiring in 1956. Now, I am throwing this one in as a bit of a wild card. WILD CARD, BITCHES! Yeah! <laughs> well, that should have woken up those falling asleep at the back. The Ki-83 was developed as a long-range heavy fighter for the Japanese Imperial Forces, and to be honest, it is kind of surprising it isn't as well known as other contemporary aircraft, though that might be because it never actually got into service. The aircraft was reportedly surprisingly agile for a big, two-seat twin-engine design, and had a respectable top speed of 438 miles per hour at 32,810 feet. But wait, I hear you cry. That is much slower than other aircraft already listed. Yep. But we're also looking at some testbed speeds, and the lower figure represents what the Japanese achieved with it. 
After the war, the Americans got their hands on examples of the Ki-83 and took them home for testing. And they, by using higher octane fuels than the Japanese had available to them, managed to get 473 miles per hour out of the big fighter. Not bad at all. Okay, so we have finally come to the most popular suggestion, and I fully suspect the most controversial, the Dornier DO-335 file. This remarkable aircraft is often held up as the fastest piston engine fighter of the Second World War, and certainly in the aforementioned video on the XP-47J was the one that by far caused the most comment. So me putting it at number 6 is no doubt going to upset some folks. Well, that's tough. The DO-335 was a brilliant piece of engineering, and would likely have made a formidable aircraft if it had got into service. Because right there is the first question. There seems to be a perception that the DO-335 was zipping around blasting Allied aircraft all over the place. In fact, I hesitate at describing it as an operational aircraft. Notionally, the DO-335 was deployed in small numbers to service squadrons in the later stages of the war but there doesn't seem to be any record of it actually doing anything other than conducting familiarisation training, and the one account of an encounter, when one was nearly bounced by a flight of Hawker Tempest 5s, would indicate that that was all they were capable of. But let's be generous and say that getting into a service squadron counts as a type being operational. How about its speed? Well, according to Green and Swamborough, the top listed speed of the DO-335A0 which was the pre-production variant, was 455 miles per hour at 23,295 feet. I can hear the keyboards clattering already. Here's the thing. Online, there is a whole mass of top speeds cited for the file, and the most common seems to be 474 miles per hour. Now, I haven't been able to run down the exact origin of this figure, but it generally is attributed to another William Green book, aircraft of the Third Reich. I don't have a copy of that book, but I do have some other books by Green, and they don't quote that figure, so I can't say for sure if the citation is accurate. But we will be generous once again, and accept it pending further investigation. And that puts the Dornier DO-335 in sixth place. Yes, I know the Fury has been put in once already, but here we can appreciate the sheer speed of a testbed. The second prototype Fury was fitted with a Napier Sabre 7 engine that was rated at 3,055 horsepower. With this, the aircraft made a very respectable 483 miles per hour at 18,500 feet. It's not a true fighter, and the Sabre Fury never got into service, but I'm putting it in just because someone is bound to say, what about the Land Fury, in the comments. But the other aircraft ranked at number 5 was certainly a service aircraft, the Supermarine Spitefall. The final evolution of the Spitfire, if we don't include the attacker jet, the Spitefall saw limited service with the RAF after the war, though in very limited numbers. The definitive F Mark 14, which was the only model to see production despite its bizarrely high Mark number, and of which only 16 were built, had a top reported speed of 483 miles per hour at 26,000 feet. Just as it is with the Spitfire, so it is with the Mustang. And with the P-51H, we get the ultimate expression of this legendary aircraft. It's generally described as a lightened P-51D. In fact, North American built the P-51H as essentially a completely new aircraft with very little in common with the earlier model. Every measure to strip weight was done, and the engine changed to a Packard V-1650-9 with water methanol injection. All of this meant that the P-51H had a top listed speed of 487 miles per hour at 25,000 feet. This makes the P-51H the fastest service piston engine fighter to ever see service, with 555 built. The other issue is, was it the fastest piston engine fighter of World War II? Generally, it is stated that this is not the case, as the type never got to see combat. But some squadrons had received the type before the surrender of Japan, and were preparing to use it in future combat operations. So, an argument could be made that it was an operational fighter 
during the Second World War. See what I mean about this topic getting rather subjective? Yet another Republic offering, the XP-72, sometimes nicknamed the Ultra Bolt, was another evolution of the basic P-47, this time fitted with a Wasp major engine that produced 3,500 horsepower. Armament was 650 caliber Browning machine guns, and all in all, the XP-72 had a reported top speed of 490 miles per hour at 25,000 feet. First flying in 1944, the performance of the aircraft led to a production order for the P-72, which would have had the option of having four 37mm cannon as armament instead. However, it wasn't to be, and the XP-72 vanished into history. Another great what-if. And so we come to our final offering. Despite committing heavily to the early jets, the British did have a crack at seeing if the Spyfall could be made even faster, and so set about fitting a Griffin 101 engine with a three-stage supercharger and a new five-bladed propeller to a standard F-14 to see what would happen. With this, the new model, the F-16, was recorded during testing in 1947 as hitting 494 miles per hour at 28,000 500 feet. But it was for naught, as jets were the way of the future, and this record, the fastest achieved by a British piston engine aircraft, and if you don't believe Republic on the XP 47J, the fastest piston engine fighter ever built. So there we have it, and hopefully this clears up the argument. But having said that, and knowing the military aviation community, I very much doubt it. Let me know what you think, and I look forward to seeing the debate in the comments. Have a good one, and I'll see you all next time.